being pleasantly surprised by a sci-fi movie or a horror movie or really any movie for that matter but of course on this channel it tends to be those kind of genres generally it's always a really cool feeling to be pleasantly surprised by a movie that felt or looked or at least you'd heard maybe that it could have been a somewhat disposable movie maybe it's okay for one watch maybe a couple maybe a bit of schlocky fun some gore something like that but it's nice to be surprised in more of a way than that where you actually find no this is actually just a good movie and it's one which for whatever reason isn't talked about enough isn't well known enough maybe it didn't have the backing that it required for a proper full theatrical release maybe it was a straight to dvd situation such as one of my favorite horror movies 2005's isolation which is a straight to dvd irish horror film an excellent one extremely undervalued but in the case of this one, this is one of those movies which to me looked going into it a little bit too polished almost, a little bit too, I don't know, that like the quality was God, overstepping the mark almost, but in a way that is bad, if that makes any sense, because some movies deserve to look almost bad quality, if you get my meaning, like a B-movie kind of way, and sometimes you get these movies that have kind of oversaturated lighting and production design that goes in weird directions where they put a huge amount of effort into the sets but then the creatures look kind of whack and then they get actors who clearly just did it for the paycheck. I'm sure you can think of movies like that and to me I fully expected this movie, Pandorum, to fall into that kind of category. However, to kind of show my cards fairly early, as you could kind of tell from what I was already saying, I would actually put this more in the kind of camp as stuff such as the German movie, I believe it is, called uh, Cargo, and also probably better known to most audiences, Event Horizon. And just like Event Horizon, I feel like this is the kind of movie which could, to some degree, split audiences a little bit. Not that anyone will, strictly speaking, hate it, per se. I don't think there's anything really to hate about Pandorum or Event Horizon or even Cargo, but it's more so the kind of film that some people could watch and then think, yeah, that was okay, but not really feel the need to watch again. But then other people, I think, could absolutely love the movie and have it maybe as one of their go-to sci-fi fun flicks or one of their absolute favourites. And to me, that's what Pandorum feels like. Not controversial or difficult to get behind in any particular way. It's actually a very well-rounded film, and my scores are going to reflect that, but more so just the overall vibe. I think some people will love it, some people will think it's just okay. It's just that kind of movie. Now, as far as the story itself, I can't really go, as I've said before, super into it without getting spoilery, but the basic gist is a familiar one to any sci-fi fan. A guy wakes up on a ship, everything seems to be kind of dilapidated and out of use, but it shouldn't be that way. It should be bustling with people, or at least more people than he's meeting, which is approximately zero, and everything just looks like something badly has gone wrong. Something about the ship doesn't feel right, doesn't look right, so he starts to try and find other people on the ship, he's looking for the crew, all that kind of stuff, and this particular character is played by Ben Foster, who of course, especially in recent years, we've seen do great work. One of my favourite performances of his is in Hell or High Water, outstanding film, I love that movie. This one is earlier than that, but you can definitely still see the seeds there for the kind of performances that he doubtless had already given, that he most definitely would give, and I think that his performance in this movie as well is actually really good. He feels realistic, I would say. That's the one word that describes the way he acts, the way he reacts to things, the way he progresses through the movie. It feels like a real guy, which it's kind of rare as far as sci-fi movies go. They can often feel larger than life or over the top or just weird or out of place. He actually just feels really good in the movie. And of course, he's not the only well-known face, but perhaps a less obvious choice of casting in this movie is of course Dennis Quaid. Not the kind of guy who I would typically think of, maybe some people would, but for me definitely not in a sci-fi sort of role, but again, it's cool to see him involved as well. Now, as far as the rest of the story progressing, he essentially finds out that there are these creatures on the ship, and these creatures have a very interesting design. I'm actually kind of a fan of the way they look. It's one of the more undervalued creature designs, where it's almost like a deep sea angler fish meets the descent if you've seen that movie, that kind of appearance, so it's interesting, not completely unique, but cool at the same time. I like the atmosphere that the movie has, it's very dense, it feels not necessarily as dreadful, if you will, as like uh, 
the Babadook or Hereditary or something like that, but it definitely feels like there's an impending threat constantly through the movie. And of course, as I alluded to just now, I can't really go super into it beyond that without starting to spoil stuff, but you definitely have elements of horror in there, but overall it's most definitely a sci-fi movie first and foremost, in a similar way to how people argue back and forth as to whether or not Alien is a sci-fi movie or if it's a horror movie, the reality is it's both. It's a horror movie set in a sci-fi location, which is similar to how a lot of other movies play in two genres at the same time, this movie does the same thing. Now, now, overall, I'm not going to put it on the same kind of playing field or level as something like Alien, for instance. I might not even necessarily put it quite as high as Event Horizon. But I will say that I was, as I mentioned earlier, very pleasantly surprised by this movie. I enjoyed it quite a bit. I like the casting, I like the acting, I like the look of the film, I like the essential story and the plot. And although it's definitely not a higher thinking, kind of sci-fi movie or a horror movie in general, like Arrival for instance would be, but it doesn't really need to be, it's not that kind of film, it's more of a traditional approach to sci-fi, more of like an 80s or 90s style sci-fi flick, and I think it benefits from that because that's kind of a dying art. Those movies aren't showing up anywhere near as much, and yet they do have fans, and those of us who do love those kind of films, I mean if you think of just some of them, The Thing, The Blob, Leviathan, various others too, they're not necessarily quite as critically acclaimed as some others, but they have these fervent, strong fan bases, myself included, and I think this movie definitely deserves to be in that kind of discussion. Now, as far as my individual scores go, initially, of course, we have the story and the plot. And for the story and the plot, I'm actually going to give it a 7, which is fairly generous and probably higher than you might expect. It's certainly higher than I would have expected. I would have thought maybe a 5 or a 6 for a movie like this, which is very easily a generic feeling kind of film. It could have very easily been that way, but it's not. And again, I can't really get into why the score is higher, but trust me on that, the story does more than you might expect it to. As far as the characters, the motivations, the casting for sure, again, I'm going to give it another 7, because I really liked it. The casting was less obvious than some others, because a lot of sci-fi tends to use the same kind of characters in certain roles, like generic people in stereotypical roles. This doesn't do that, it bucks that trend. There aren't a huge amount of main characters either, there's like two or three in particular, and I like that, it keeps it almost self-contained within what is a very large ship. And again, that starts to play with the anti-claustrophobia, which I've talked about before in films, where if you give the characters a large location to play in, you can still achieve claustrophobia by still making it feel like you can't really get anywhere, almost like being in the middle of a desert, or in the deep sea, or in the middle of space. No, you're not constrained physically, but at the same time, you still feel claustrophobic because you can't really go anywhere. No matter how far you travel in any direction, you're not really going to get anywhere new. So it's kind of this anti-claustrophobia, and I really like that, and the film definitely plays on that kind of vibe, combined with a little bit of that kind of virus or leviathan claustrophobic submarine vibe as well, that sort of thing with uh, cramped hallways and ducts and cables running all over the place, that kind of stuff, which is a great visual to work with. It means there's a lot going on on screen. And speaking of the things that are going on on screen, that brings me, of course, to the visuals and the effects. And for that, I'm actually going to go even higher with my highest score of the five with an eight out of ten. I like the way the film looks. I like the fact that they actually put effort into not just the way the characters' clothes look or just how the ship looks, which tends to be the usual trope, as I mentioned earlier, but at the cost of a good creature. They don't do that in this movie creatures I think look cool, they're inventive, and I think as far as camera work goes, they're well used. Next up then we have the audio, the soundtrack, music, that kind of stuff, and once again I'm actually going to go a lot higher than I would have thought with another 7. I really like the soundtrack in the movie, I think it added to the environment, the kind of, not claustrophobic, but the kind of atmosphere, I guess you could say, the dread that I mentioned earlier, and I think it plays into that very well. The sound effects, especially early on in the film, when Ben Foster is looking through the ship, trying to find signs of life, every little tap and tinkle, of course, is amplified for more of a horror effect, and all of that is, I would say, well used. And finally, of course, as far as the rewatchability, the entertainment, either on your own or with a group, I'm actually going to keep the stroke alive with another 7, 
because I think it's actually got a lot of rewatchability, either on your own or with a group. It's the kind of movie where you could have a conversation with friends while watching it, but at the same time, there are certain vibes that the film gives off, especially in certain scenes or sequences, where the film kind of automatically grabs your attention. It's the kind of movie where people will be talking, but then everyone would just go quiet for a certain scene. It's got that kind of vibe to it. Whereas some movies, you could pretty much just talk over the whole thing, and nobody would really notice what was going on. I wouldn't say that this is so much one of those films, at least not for me personally. So a seven from me is the score I'm gonna give it. And overall, that actually means I'm rating this movie a really respectable 3.6 out of 5, which is a lot higher than a admittedly generic looking, say, DVD cover or poster for this movie could have you believe. Because let's face it, a lot of sci-fi, especially lesser known ones, are just that. They're generic, they're cheesy, they're stereotypical, and they do have a tendency, let's be honest, to be a little bit underwhelming, or at the very least, disappointing. So to me, this one is definitely a gem within the sci-fi horror genre, an undervalued one, and definitely check it out if you get the chance. So as I said, it's a 3.6 out of 5, which works out to, what, 7.2 out of 10, 72 out of 100. That's a pretty good score overall. But definitely check it out, as I said. And that's it for this pick, so I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.